PCL for Crato. Welcome to another presentation of PShell, the parametric shell for Crato. This short demonstration will use PShell for configure and assembly, a tree-based user interface example with model icons is shown at the end. The demo components will show a simple caster wheel assembly. The main assembly has an associated drawing as well. The drawing will use model parameter to display the BOM table and the title block data. It is recommended to use a 150% assembly structure, where you can easily suppress and resume components. The basic idea is to use a master assembly and to replace components in this master and to create a new number for this derived assembly without any reference to the master. Creo supports replacement for components from an interchange assembly and to replace components via the same family table. This assembly is prepared to work in this way. I will also replace a component by creating a family table on the fly and clean the reference table at the end. For the on the fly configuration I would use a 150% model, where we add a table with the required component name. Now we can configure the table, replace the component, and update a linked model drawing, if this exists. Finally we clear the family table from the model. More changes, like feature delete or dimension modification could be done now. Let's see the basic code. The purpose of the replace model procedure is to replace components in a given assembly. For the given arguments, we get the assembly, the current component to replace, and the new component. The first step is to search for all components in one assembly level, where the component name match the given model name pattern. The visit function will return all features while the feature type is a component. Next, we extract the model name from this feature ID if the model name is equal to the given argument. We append this component ID to a list of its for replace. The final call within the procedure is to interchange model files in the given assembly and to replace all given IDs by the target model. Again, this is valid only for interchange and family table components. It is important to know that the interchange will not happen recursive, only in the top level of the given assembly. The procedure replace mode test is only for set up the required arguments and will be called first. Now we will have a short demonstration in Cray 07, where we use PShell in synchronous mode for this assembly configuration. OK, see it live, now. After I have opened the drawing, we activate the associated assembly. The call to our script is registered once on Creo Start. You see the label assembly configuration 2.0 debug menu label in the initialization file and the result in Creo. After selection of the button in Creo, the specified script is executed in debug mode. The last call is to our main routine. Before we call this function, we add a couple of global arrays in one namespace array to view the content during debug. Here you see the sample content of the application global array content. A couple of scripts are evaluated before the main. Each of the script files can be updated to our needed runtime. During debug it may be very helpful to call functions without preparation. For this, you simply give a button label in the function to call. The main call in our script will change the working folder and call a function to create our main user window. Here we set two buttons. If you pick wrong configure the program will run in an unmanned mode. The other button will set up a user interface and is shown later. If we select the test call button in our debug window, we call the function with the same name. This is only to prepare the input arguments for the real procedure. This allows us to config the test call to any test function during develop. In this procedure the last call would replace the given components. Let's comment this out for a while. Now I save the updated source code, and eva this update in our program, which is still executing in Crato. As you see the debug window will show the value of their input arguments. We now can make sure that the given parameter is correct for our procedure. If you want to display messages to the user, there was a function prepared. We now just uncomment this, save, eval and call the function again.
you see the messages displayed in the Creo message window. The report message will add a debug statement and display the same in Creo with a prefix only. The purpose of this procedure is to replace components in a given assembly. The final call within the procedure is to interchange model files in the given assembly and to replace all given IDs by the target model. After we save, eval and call the function again, we see the trace of an error. The error will tell us that pshell or Creo has not found the specified model in session. We can double check this by calling a pshell function at runtime. The result is a boolean value which tells us that the model does not exist in session. In our prepared code we uncomment the code to open this missing file. After this call the model is in session and can be used for the replace operation. The function succeeds without an error, but the result is not updated in Kratos. We force now this update by calling a function to update the model tree. For our next example I change the program initialization. Now we don't want to initialize our debug mode. For this we change the boolean value to be zero. After update the text, we save the text and run the program again. You see the debug window will not appear. Now we start the program by picking the run configure button. We run now in an issue where debug is not enabled. We have a bug. The question is now how to debug. Basically you must find your issues, fix the script and run the program again. You can use your own IDE or the one from Pshell for bug fixing. If you would have written a C program you must do more steps to debug your code. For the Pshell code you don't need to exit Creo or you currently running program. You can set breakpoints where execution will stop. You can add debug statements or statements to display the current content of a variable. If you have found your problem, just save the modified file and resource it. In the still running event loop, now you can continue to start the program by your own basic procedure. Pshell is capable to convert your debug code to release code if you want. In this step debug statements are not exported to the released code. The procedure for debug is, add debug statements, enter debug mode, see the debug output. Now you fix your code. You can call pshell call on the fly. At the end resource your code and continue without exit or e-register your app in Kratos. Finally release and distribute your changes. You can even protect your code from viewing in clear text. OK, continue in Kratos 7. Let's look at the trace, and we see the program tries to execute the unknown command check in the procedure interchange. We search this in our main program and discover that we missed to set the comment for this statement. We add the number sign, save this, and restart the call again bit back in debug mode to explain what we are doing. This small main program is divided in four sections. Section 1 will replace a component by using interchange functionality. Section 2 1 will replace a component at four positions by using an instance of a family table. Section 3 will create a temporary instance to replace a component. Section 4 will prepare our drawing. The reference drawing is created by replace the default master by a temporary assembly instance and clean up the table after the assembly is replaced. In section 1 a breakpoint is set just after we had replaced a component by using an interchange assembly. The code is getting the dependencies of the 3D model, and retrieving both if not in our current session. You see in our debug message, that the requested part is part of the interchange assembly, but we need to open the component from disk. The component was replaced, but we need to update the model tree. This is done once at program end, but in this debug case we want to see the result after each step. In debug mode we can call the function right now on the fly, now that the tree data is refreshed and the replaced model name is displayed. For section 2, we use now a family table. In this part of the code, you see a lot of debug variable statements, and the break is set just before we call the final replace function. In the last check we prove that the model to replace is part of the table and in session. We continue and eval the tree update statement again. Now you see that the generic model is replaced by an instance of the same table. For section 3 we replace one member of the table by creating a temporary instance. 
After the instance is created, we use the same function as before to replace the model. At the end we erase the table. Now we modify the used PLM article number for our drawing in BOM table. As well we change the material string and the density of the model. The model has a suppressed feature. We resume this last feature. Get the dimension from this chamfer and changing the size before we return from this small function. Now refresh the tree to see the update. For the final is section 4, we use this new model in our drawing. The requirement to have an unlinked drawing is archived, by running our script without any user input in an unmanned mode. For the final step and to demonstrate a small user interface, we want to run without debug. For this we change the boolean value in program initialization to zero. Now we hide our code editor and start the program with the graphical user interface button. The idea of this small interface is to change the assembly component by component if required. By just selecting the image in this tree view, the root item can contain whatever is required for a project like this. For example the target status, the customer for this assembly, the target number of the assembly and drawing and so on. Now we expand the assembly by selection the big blue plus sign, and we increase the height of our application window. A user is now able to see the assembly structure in a structured view. Each configurable component has a small blue icon at the top right corner of the displayed icon. Each sub-assembly can be expanded as well. By selecting the wheel, the reference based on the interchange assembly is calculated. A default component is set, and the icon is created or updated. The user could now select one model off the interchange assembly. For the temporary family table, no part icon is displayed, and the user can set the part name, material and the chamfer configuration. For the replace by family table, each component name is dynamically display of the associated family table. This can be filtered based on your configuration requirements. After set up the structure we apply this configuration. The result is same in our previous example. You see the chamfer of the plate was updated to our needs. The code for this interface was developed in about 4 hours. All images in the structure display are dynamically and will update on model changes. That's it. Thank you for watching.